Hi, welcome back to Daddy Kerb's farm. This is part two of planting my 14 bare root fruit trees. Today we're going to start with planting the pawpaw trees. And uh, I've never grown those. I'm not certain that they are going to do very well here. But I know that they require uh, more moist soil and not so much heat. So I'm going to try right here in this area, right in front of the orchard, is this little area that gets a nice shade. The ducks are talking to me. This area right here gets some nice shade from these trees, so hopefully we'll really, uh, reduce some of the, the heat stress. And then right, right behind uh, the trees, right over here, is one of the, the heads to the sprinkler that comes off of our septic system. It's an aerobic septic system that has two sprinkler heads that sprays back out onto the property. So right here is one that creates a, a really moist area here. So hopefully with that moisture and this shade, we can get these pawpaw trees to grow up to a point to where at some point I can take some of these uh, hackberry trees out and open that up for lighting so that the, the trees can reach for the light. But in the meantime, they need that, that nursery area. Okay, first, I want to point out that these trees are really small. Uh, <laughs> it, it's almost embarrassing to be planting these as trees. It seems like they should be something else. But this is what came from the nursery, and perhaps this is perfectly normal. Uh, I'm going to create a little area, and I'm going to put a tomato cage around them just so I remember where they are. And I don't step on them, and the animals don't get to them, or at least they won't, you know, just walk over them. So, so I'm actually going to start with this soil, the loose compost soil that came out of that uh, expired hugo culture mound, the one that didn't work. little trees and I'm going to put some of this soil that came out of the hole around it if ever there was a tree that I planted that I I just didn't immediately have confidence in it's it's these i mean they, they look so small and so puny that uh i'm just going to trust that they're going to do the right thing here okay so now that i have that in place and i'm going to place a uh, tomato cage that i don't really use for tomatoes right around here this is mostly just so that we know where this thing is All right, there's one. Let's get the next one in the ground. Okay, pawpaw number two. Just these small little holes reminds me why I like to plant my fruit trees on mounds because digging into the soil is a lot harder than digging into a soft mound of soil that you have uh, placed there on purpose. So here's tree number two. And the identifying cage gets placed over the top. I just have extra soil, extra uh, compost soil in the bucket, so I'm going to put it around both trees.
this is Alex. This is one of our rescue cats. When uh, we recognized that we were having a, an abundance of rats in the shed and we had zero cats on the property, we decided to call the shelters and see what they could do for us. Where it turns out that most shelters will give you barn cats for free. They've already been spayed or neutered and they have already uh, gotten all of their uh, vaccinations. So we brought some home and they're working out pretty well. I'm not really a cat person. This, in fact, right here is a little uncomfortable for me. I don't, I don't really care for cats being on me. But Alex, actually his name is Alex Tyrone. The kids couldn't decide whether it was going to be Alex or Tyrone. So it's Alex Tyrone. Uh, is now a friend to Pumpkin. You're very familiar with Pumpkin, I know. And we have another one named Agatha and another, hey Pumpkin, and another named Cowboy. He's a black and white one, looks kind of like a cow. So you'll be seeing the cats in the videos probably frequently, especially Pumpkin, because he likes to be right in the middle of everything. The apple trees are gonna go in two places. For now, I have three apple trees. One of them is gonna go in this mound here in the orchard where uh, I have not had success growing an apple yet. This is, this is my last attempt of growing an apple in this location. It is possible that the apples uh, in Texas, in this area, cotton root rot is fairly common. So if this spot is infected with cotton root, that's tough to say, cotton root rot, I will never be able to grow an apple here. If this apple tree dies in this location, this spot is going to become something like a persimmon or a pomegranate or berries or something like that. If I do have cotton root rot, it's also possible that in time, all of my apples will suffer and I won't be able to grow any. So we're gonna try this spot one more time with this tree and then I'll show you where I'm putting the other two for now. So that's my one wild apple going in this location. The other two are going to take us into the garden. So this is the location where yesterday I planted the, uh, the pawpaw trees and I was really concerned about them being ran over or walked on. So I went ahead and put logs around them just to give them a little bit more substantial uh, visible area in the, in the landscape. Hopefully it'll protect them a little bit. But I also yesterday introduced you to Alex Tyrone. And there's pumpkin. Whoa, easy, tiger. <laughs> this is one of our rescue cats. Uh, his name has been uh, Dopey, Dumpy, other things. But I think we're going to call him Cowboy because he has the black and white spots like a cow. He's a I'll let him go. He's a friendly cat, but he doesn't like to be held on to for very long. But he likes uh, hanging out in the chicken coops. At nighttime, we place them in there to hopefully take care of the rats. So we're back in the garden because we are going to do some potting of trees. This is not my preferred method of handling bare root trees, but uh, I'm not really ready for the, the the two remaining apple trees and the three mayha in the orchard. I didn't get the the earthworks to a point to where I was comfortable planting them and I don't want to have to work around them or plant them uh, too early and then disturb them. So I'm going to pot them up and this is kind of a reminder from other episodes but I'm going to make my own potting mix and I have a few uh, simple ingredients. First of all what's in here already is compost and sand from a previous experiment where I was trying to use just compost and sand but it ends up compacting and becoming uh, kind of like a brick if you're not careful. So we did add the, the cocoa peat or the coconut coir. And I found this at a local nursery. This expands to 2.3 cubic feet. 
and it comes in three of these squares. So, and it also comes in the bag is this convenient measuring bag that tells you you place one of those those uh, slabs in here and you put the water in up to the fill line and that tells you how much water you need which is pretty convenient. Again you need to use warm water or else it takes forever. This is just a few minutes in warm water right here and it's perfect. I have some over here in cold water just for demonstration and it's still clumpy. It's not breaking up. So after that sits in there for a few hours it'll break up but it's a much slower process. So we're going to mix the coconut coir the compost and sand that's already in there. And I'm going to add more. Uh, this is compost from my own pile, which is really nice. And I'm using very precise measurements. And this is lava sand. Gonna break down to about one part each lava sand compost and coconut coir. Pretty close. All right, I got that thoroughly mixed and it's a beautiful loose uh, mix. I got this filled about a third of the way up. This is just another one of those uh, kitty bucket, kitty litter buckets, and I drilled four holes in each of the short sides for drainage. So it's about a third of the way full. And I have my trees sitting back here in a bucket of water. Here's one of my wild apples. So that's gonna sit in there like that. So basically for now, I'm just gonna lean it in. And I'm gonna start putting my soil in so I can stand it up. reason this is not ideal for me is that I really want the apple tree to just get in the orchard and start establishing itself in the ground that it's going to grow in but I'd rather pot it up and give it a year's growth in a large large enough pot and then let it uh, go in the orchard next year then put it somewhere where it's going to get disturbed so there is one apple tree I'm going to do another apple and three mayhog just like this Or do you want to put the soil in? Show you. Okay, put it in. The soil is in. It's your shovel. Where is that in the world? This is a mayhaw tree. I've never had a mayhaw fruit, have you? Yes. You have? Where did you eat a mayhaw? In the garden. Oh, whose garden? My garden. Oh, I didn't know we had mayhaws in the garden. Keep going. My pants is dying. Yeah, your tomato died, didn't it? Can I put another one in there? When do we put another tomato in there? Hmm? Put it in. When do we put another tomato? In the sunny. In the springtime. Springtime. Yep. Very good. Okay, that is five complete buckets, three mayha, two apple. Hopefully next January or maybe even later this year they will go up in the orchard after I get the earthworks complete. Since part two was taking longer than I expected, 
I'm going to go ahead and close part two, but you can see this right here is going to be the beginning of part three, so look for that in a few days. Thanks for visiting. I'll talk to you soon.